We're going to be making a nice plum and ginger cake today. Nice. Fantastic. Thinking, because obviously summer's coming to an end now, we're starting to move into these sort of autumnal dishes, mm -hmm. looking for a kind of bridge dish, really. Obviously, plums, orchard fruit starting to really come into yeah. season now. So, And it's cheaper a, then, isn't it, if they're in season? Exactly, and they feel a lot yeah. Cheaper. British, nice and local. These are some of our own organic Victoria plums. Brilliant. So we'll start off, we'll have a look at the plums themselves. Um, just get these out so we can have a look for you. So I'm just, I've halved most of them. I've got about 10 plums in right. total. I'll just show you how to do one. Just take a small sharp knife and just run it round the centre. Okay. And then just give it a little twist. And then obviously you've just got this little stone in the middle that we just need to get rid of. Just pull that out. And you just want them in, in halves like that. Now, to that, I just want to add some sweetness and some spice. And we're going to leave these to, to macerate. Okay, that smells lovely. What is that? So we've got in there, we've got some lovely brown sugar in there, some nice rich dark brown molasses sugar. Okay. I've got some mixed spice. We've got some ginger, obviously. It smells a bit like Christmas. Yeah, got that. Well, that's the mixed spice. That's what we said. Often goes into, into Christmas cakes. Bit of nutmeg, bit of cinnamon. Just give them some nice, fragrant sort of flavours going yeah. on there. Just, just give it those lovely... As we said, moving into the seasons, getting that slightly more Christmassy note coming in there. Definitely. It makes me a bit sad, though, thinking that summer's over. So I guess this is, a, is the silver face. lining, is that you can get some fabulous <laughs> so, food. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, I mean, ideally, we'd like to leave those for about an hour or so. Right. It, it doesn't matter. What, 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 leaving them for an hour, what does it, I just, what does what's it What's going to happen is that the, the actual plums are just going to start to break down slightly. They're going to start releasing the juice and the sugar's actually going to mix with them and become almost like a syrup, right. which is what we're after here. So you can leave them sort of anywhere an hour to 24 hours really. Beyond that, they'll start to fall apart completely. Right. But you just want to leave them a bit of time if we can. Okay. So you could leave them overnight then? If you yeah, wanted yeah, to. If, if you wanted to, yeah, that would be fine. Le do it the night before, get it ready for the next morning. The beauty of this is you can you can do it for any kind of occasion. If you've just got someone coming around for, for tea, you could, you know, do that. If you wanted to just fancy it up into a fancy dessert, you know, you can yeah, do that as brilliant. well. So let's just have a look at our sponge mix. It's quite a quite a wet sponge mix. It's, it's almost like a Claire Flutie style sponge. Right. Um, What's Claire Flutie mean? Claire Flutie is a, it's a type of French sponge, um, right. quite low on flour content, quite high on egg content. Right. It tends to absorb things like syrups and stuff really well. So, um, so all we've got here... It's a bit here, denser because it hasn't got the A, li a little bit right? denser, but it'll take things like syrups really well. So you can make a lovely plum like a syrup to go, yeah, to go with this and it'll absorb in beautifully. Brilliant. So in here, I've got 150 grams of butter mm -hmm. and 150 grams of caster sugar. And we're just going to beat those together. You've got the butter <laughs> there in, in cubes. Is that intentional or does that help? It's, or? it's just to, to make it easier just to, to blend. If you put it in as one big lump, you'll just be there for about five minutes longer. Right. Um, it's, you know, there's, there's, there's nothing more to it than that, really. Really. Um, and just, you just want to break these down until you sort of get it quite light and fluffy and the butter's sort of broken out. Ideally you want your butter to be fairly soft. It's soft-ish at the moment. Um, we could have perhaps done with sat sitting out in a warm room for a little bit longer. Right. Again, I mean it'll blend anyway because the friction of the whisking will actually heat the butter up slightly. So could you leave that out overnight as well, the butter, yeah. to soften yeah, it up? Yeah, just, just to soften it up. If, if need be, stick it in an airing cupboard, bob it in a microwave for 10 seconds. Oh, okay. Is there the possibility of over? Blending it, or you're all right. No, you'll be you'll okay. be fine on this. You just want to get it really nice and incorporated, so it goes nice and fluffy and all binds together, as we've got there. So what? Now we've got just that. Show that to the camera because that's what we're after there. Then. It's the night it's like scrambled eggs, eggs, doesn't it? A little, little bit like scrambled eggs, yes. So now, speaking of eggs, <laughs> we're going to start adding them. Now we just want to add about sort of one at a time. I've got five eggs here. Right. Okay. Which again, obviously, is quite a lot for a for a sponge mix. And we just want to beat those in, sort of one, one to two at a time, really, to form quite a slack mixture. Now, what would happen if you put them all in? Yeah, because I'm impatient. I just chuck them all in. <laughs> it might, it might sort of split a little bit, right. which is obviously what we don't want. One little trick that I've not followed myself today: just bob a towel underneath your bowl. It'll stop it spinning, so right. you can use two right. hands at the same tip. time. Little tricks like that that us chefs know <laughs> and try and pass on to the domestic cooks. So now we've got that, it's fairly well blended, we can add in the final two eggs. Just give that a good mix through. Just make sure all that butter's nicely broken down, yeah. that's the important thing. So it's gone quite smooth now, it's quite a smooth consistency, quite, isn't quite it? Quite a smooth batter now, so now we need to go in with our, with our flour and our... Let's just, if we can just see at the camera there, that. that's the sort of runny. consistency so it's quite, we've got there. It's quite there. a loose sort of batter style, style mm -hmm. mixture this. So now we're going to go in with our flour now. Sift this. This is self-raising flour. Again, about 150 grams. Okay. It's sifted just to, to break it up from the Yeah, lumping. just to break it up. Add a little bit of air and just to take out any lumps. And then I've also got some about a tablespoon of ginger in there. Okay. Just ground ginger. So we've got ginger in the actual sponge mix and in the, and and on the plums, plums as well. well. 
So just on a gentle speed this time, just on your lowest setting. I mean, you could do this with just a, a hand whisk if you wanted. Right. It will just take longer. And just slowly incorporate all that flour in. Have a spatula on hand just in case you need to just run down the sides. You okay. sometimes do when you're making this kind of dish. I think we'll just do that smell now. smell that ginger. It smells beautiful. Start starting to really pick up that fragrance yeah. now, aren't we? I mean, I suppose if you wanted to, you could try and use some fresh ginger or some caramelised ginger. I'm sure that would work. You would, you would find you'd get these little sort of pockets of spiced mm -hmm. ginger going on. That would work fine, but you'll get a smoother, more even consistency well, doing it this way. I think it's quite a homely smell as well. So it's sort of nice, like we're saying, around Christmas time. You yeah. make this, it'll make the whole house smell very homely. And if you've got people coming, getting back from university, perhaps the children are coming back or something, it'll sort of remind them of mum's cooking. So exactly. I think it's nice. Exactly. It's quite a nice homely dish, this. Yeah. So I've just got a square tin here. Now I've not lined it, we've just, just greased it. Okay. This what, will what, actually... What have you greased? You just know, just a bit of butter. Bit, bit of butter. butter. You right. could use margarine, anything like that. Just make sure it's well greased. It will turn out quite easily though, this, this cake. It does, it's one of those, it doesn't stick to the pan very much, right. which is obviously for um, domestic cooks a bit of a concern at times. <laughs> So, oh no, it's sticking in the pan and you can't get it out. No, tell me about it's it. It's always a bit of a disaster. So I turn it out and it just comes, I have to dig it out with a knife and then that's <laughs> it, it just comes out and crumbles. So you just, just push it into the corner gently and just sort of smooth the mixture so it's roughly even. Okay. And then we're just going to so take, just got it there. show them that. Sorry, I'm, I'm tipping it upside down now. It's okay, the don't, don't worry. <laughs> and then we're just going to take our plums, we're just going to pop those on top. Just in nice even rows. I was going to say, do you have to do a particular pattern or anything? Or no, I mean, you can, you can go for a quite sort of scattergun approach if you like, if you mm -hmm. want to be quite neat with them and, and give it a nice finish. Uh, you However you like to do it. to do a face, I can imagine. No, I wanted to do a nice pretty flower. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, that's the thing you can go nuts. My, my girlfriend loves to decorate cakes and that sort of thing. That's what us girls like to do with, and eat them. With that style, exactly. So just lay those out on top and you can take just if you've got any of the syrup left obviously this is still fairly solid and just sprinkle a little bit of it over the top Lovely. give those extra flavors then you want to pop that into an oven about 140 sort of gas mark three gas mark four mm -hmm. should take about half an hour 40 minutes and does it not you, you know you'd think maybe it would overcook the plums or something does it no the plums the plums will just cook down nicely and they'll go quite soft and now plums have quite a a sharp taste to them anyway. So you get these lovely little pockets of sort of sharpness just kicking in with the lovely warm spice of the of the ginger and the mixed spice coming in. And what goes well with it? A custard ice cream or yeah, its own? Yeah, custard ice cream, bit of cream, bit of clotted cream be lovely with that little quenelle of clotted mm -hmm. cream on the top. Again, just if you did that, a little bit of dusting of magic sugar, it suddenly becomes quite an elegant dessert as well as just, uh, you know, a cake that you could have uh, you know, with a cup of tea, yeah, with, exactly. with a friend around in the afternoon. We are right. You can all right. Shay, you can, I know, I know, I know you're always keen for this. I've only got one spoon, so I'm afraid it's going to be I've got another one. have it then, Shay, that's fine. <laughs> Unfortunately, that brings us to the end of this morning's programme. I'll have that when I finish the link, because ladies shouldn't speak with their mouths full, should they? So, um, unfortunately, that does bring us to the it's end nice, of the It's nice, it'll be gone program. by the time you finish this We link. will see you on Friday, and have a fantastic week. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.